Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the second video of our data governance session. Again, with me behind the desk, Matthew Muse. Matt, what will we see in the second session? So in this session, we're going to give an overview of the main use cases of data governance. And you can think of it in two sides. There's the uh, business main use cases, and there's also the IT use cases as well. So we're going to show both of them. From the business side, we're going to show um, in the web portal, if somebody owns data, what they see and the capabilities of data governance for that business owner. We'll talk about policies, attestations, we'll talk about self-service in the IT shop. And then from the IT side, we'll talk about access reporting, uh, resource access, account access, as well as account uh, comparison simulation. Cool. Let's start. Data governance combines two worlds together. On the one hand side, the IT-centric world, which are the administrators and people working in IT. And on the other hand side, the business, typically people not working in the IT and not really interested in technical bits. Our data governance implementation allows, on the one hand side, the administrators to do their jobs by working with technical permissions. And on the other hand side, the business, to order permissions or to order new shares. To combine both worlds together in the Data Governance Edition, there is the Data Under Governance. Data Under Governance allows to make resources available in the shopping system where the business can start to order it. To document the differences as well, the tool set is different. So on the one hand side, manager and designer Maybe job queue info and object browser are the tools for the more administrative world. They will never seen by the business. And as more, if you move to the business side of the data governance, you will move to the web portal. The simple rule is business to the web and the admins can get access to admin tools. We try to consider this order as well here in the video training. So we will start on the admin side. Then we will play some resources under governance and we'll move to the business side. With my managed host added, my agent deployed, and everything is in a data status of data available, everything is okay at this point. And what I can do is from the manager via the DGE server, I can actually browse and enumerate resources on that server. Now, in this particular case, my agent, my managed host happens to be this machine, but the same goes for anything that I happen to manage remotely like this NetApp filer. But what I'll do is I'll show you what the behavior is uh, on this particular host here in terms of what you can do for enumerating remotely. So the default behavior when I double click on any particular managed host is to bring me to the resource browser. So in this view, I see shares and local file system. I'm going to go through the local file system. And I can see I have my C drive here. And a few seconds after I've made my default selection, in this case, I only have my C drive, you'll see security show underneath there. So you can see NT authority system, built-in administrators, etc. And what happened there was the DGE server received a request for a particular resource to say, get me security. And what happens then is the DGE server finds the service account for the domain in which that managed host exists. Internally, it elevates as that service account and then reaches out to that server, to that resource to get the security. So all the security retrieval is done via the service account for the domain. So again, I'm going to keep digging in here and I'm going to go to my data directory and I have some non shares and just a couple of folders in here. Right. But again, whenever you make a selection, the DGE server will be contacted to get the security. So this is live security that you see below. This isn't security recent as whatever your, your scan schedule is. It's live security being executed by the DGE server out to whatever your managed host is. So this is a full fledged security editor. I have the ability to actually right click in the security and I can actually go add rights so I can modify security. 
I can do bulk replacing of security if I want. So anywhere on a particular managed host that Matthew Muse has access, I want to replace that access with a different account. So that's capable here. So here I would actually pick an account. So let's just go be Muse, check names, Brandy Muse, Brandy Muse is my cat. I'm going to go next and then I'm going to give Brandy Muse full control and I'm going to go finish. Now at that point, that account hasn't actually been added. It's just kind of like a scratch pad for security. So if I can make this a little bigger here. So here you can see that, and it's in bold, that I've added BMU's full control to this particular folder, but it doesn't actually take effect until I click save. So once you click save, are you sure you want to ch save your changes? Yes. And now that security change is being executed. So now that we have agents deployed, they're off, they're doing scanning, they're enumerating the folders, they're enumerating files, optionally enumerating files. The agents are actually looking at the access control entries. They're looking at the trustees that are part of access control entries like groups or users. And they're actually storing all that information locally. But they also send some of that information up to the DGE server who stores that information in the Dell One Identity Manager database in the QAM tables. So what information gets sent up to the central DGE server and then up to DIM? That's something we call the security index. And what the security index is basically, this agent found this particular account to have some form of access on this host that we're watching. So Matt has folder access on server A. Matt has share access on server B. Things like that. That's what we call the security index. It's a fast way to find out where accounts are actually used in access control lists. So the central one identity manager database in the QAM tables, there isn't the complete picture of where somebody has access. In order to find that information out, you start with the security index potentially to say that, okay, I can see that Matt has folder access on this server and share access on, on this server. I know that his account is used in this case directly. Show me everywhere that Matt has access, right? And that requires a further query uh, using an account access query. But for now, the concept of security index shows us that particular accounts are being used like groups or, or um, users. So in order to see the security index, we have this view called the security index view. What the security index view shows are all the accounts that have been found across your managed host to be found directly at groups, users, etc. And here's an example. I have this uh, group here called the Domain Local Finance Group. This group has been used on a resource in order to provide access to people. However, within that group, there's a nested group called the Global Finance Group. And within the Global Finance Group, I have people. But those people that are in that group may not appear in the security index because they're not directly ACLED. Only the domain local finance group was ACLED. So over here, if I switch over to that actual resource on the folder, you can see I have the domain local finance group, but it's the global group that's nested within that domain local finance group and the AD account that are a member of the global group those are actually the people who have access. However, we're only showing the domain local finance group here in the security index because that's the only account that the agent knows about. It knows that it found the domain local finance group and it's reporting it back to the DGE server. So from here, I get domain local finance showing up in the security index. You can see that we actually listed under the yes, which means it has explicit permissions on one or more resources. But we also have no in here as well. Basically what we do with this view is we break down all of your AD accounts, 
all of the 80 users, also SharePoint groups, local users, local groups, basically any type of account that the DGE agents can find. And we separate them into the accounts that we found to be directly used, but also the reverse of that are the accounts that we have not found to be directly used. For example, a global finance group might appear in the no list because it hasn't been found to be directly ACLED anywhere, but membership in the global group is what ultimately provides access to the resource. The security index can be actual, actually be seen in the object browser. So I'm gonna go down to the object browser. Here we go. The table, QAM security index. Again, QAM tables of the DGE tables. And here I have my security index entries. I have 250 of them. Well, basically, a QAM security index entry shows you three things. It shows you an agent, a resource type, and the trustee. So the agent is the agent that's responsible for specific managed host. The resource type, so here we have local user rights. It could be NTFS file or share and the actual account that has been found to be directly ACLED on that resource. So in the case of the finance share that, uh, or the finance folder, we're gonna find that particular resource. And you can see that J Alomari has folder level access on the agent for that managed host. And then going back to the manager and looking at the security, you can see right there J. Alamari has direct access on, on a folder on that managed host.